What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about classes in Java. And classes are important because classes are going to take you from a person who writes hello world statements into a programmer that's getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars and writing software that scales to millions of people. And that sounds sort of like an overstatement, but object-oriented programming is that important and classes are totally foundational. And classes are not that difficult of a concept to understand. The best analogy that I can give you, the simplest introduction to this is a toolbox. See, when I was a kid, I would like I would go get like screwdrivers and stuff out of my dad's toolbox and I would never put them back and my dad would come home and yell at me because his tools were all over the place his his hammer was over there and he was mad because he can't find his damn hammer and his son had just put his hammer just underneath a bench somewhere and that's the concept that you need to understand about classes Classes are essentially like a toolbox to put your data in. See, we could put all types of variables all over the place. We could put, we could initialize an int of Pokemon here and we could put a two in it. And we could do this for every single piece of data in our program. Every single piece of data could be just it all over the place. You could, every single piece of data could be just by itself. But we have classes because it's almost like the toolbox. It helps us put data into logical places so that we don't get confused like my dad does and not know where our variables are. That's probably the easiest way to understand it, but that doesn't really do it enough. The second is that if you could look at a class visually, and we will look at a class visually here in a second. It's good to see things like how they actually look. A class, when you actually initialize it and when you turn it into an object and when you actually create it, it looks like an Excel spreadsheet without columns. So in our case, we would have a, we would put our variable here and we would have different places to put our variables almost like in an Excel spreadsheet. And it doesn't really look like the, anything like this. And uh, this little box here is more for visual representation, but just think of it as this. It's just a, an Excel spreadsheet that you can create that logically gives you places to put your variables so they are not strewn around all over the place. And you can give this Excel spreadsheet a little place or a name so that you can logically group your Pokemon variables and you can logically group other objects so that you can quickly access them in a dot format. So if I wanted to access this right here, I would do that. I would dot and I would be able to access, access it whenever I want to. And the same thing for the other variable. You need to look at it like, you are initializing a variable and there's essentially in a program a little excel spreadsheet of data in these words that you have and you can dot into them and you can access them at any time that you want to but we need to understand some very important rules about classes the first rule is that this is going to blow your mind classes don't actually exist in software Classes are the tool to actually make an object. That's another important thing. So think of classes as they don't really exist. They are more so there to create these little Excel spreadsheets that we call object. This Excel spreadsheet is actually just an object. You hear that term all the time, object, object, object. But you need to understand that because classes and objects can be so big, they have to have a place to be stored in another place in memory. So whenever we initialize a class, we have to use this new keyword because 
classes can be so big that they need to be stored on the heap. And by doing that, we new up a class or we new up an object. And you do that by this funny syntax right here. So if we wanted to create another Squirtle, so if we wanted to create a Squirtle here, what we would do is we would new up <clears throat> this Squirtle and what we would have inside of this, this little word right here is we would essentially have an Excel spreadsheet. So instead of having this, this actual word that we would have up here would be Squirtle and we would have a nice little Excel spreadsheet of data to house our Squirtles. And you may be wondering, well, how do we actually put data inside of it? And that's what we're going to do in IntelliJ right now. So first thing is we actually need to create our own class. And by doing that, we click new, we click Java class and we're just going to we're going to model this directly after the data that we did in the whiteboard so i'm going to go class and i'm going to call this a pokemon class if you didn't see what i did right click new java class we're going to go pokemon and then we're going to go up here and we're going to start newing up variables so whenever you actually create a variable you can do whatever you want to. You can put whatever type of variable that you want into this and you could call it whatever you want to. So we're going to declare an int and these are what are called properties. You see, there's properties and then there's methods. And we talked about methods already and methods can be stored in classes too. So you can store both state data and you can store methods, which are going to be how you actually act on data. You see, there's only two things that you can really do in software. At the end of the day, the fanciest AI, Google, Facebook, really what they're doing is all they're doing is they are storing data and they are acting on data. And as soon as you can kind of realize that about programming, programming is going to become a lot easier for you. So let's just do one more and we're going to call this int Pokemon2. Uh, we can't call, we can't just call it that. We have to give it a follow programming conventions and you can initialize them so that they are empty or you could do this where you actually put it inside of a constructor. So another thing that you need to realize is that classes have things what are called a constructor. A constructor is literally a method that has the exact same name as the class because what happens in a constructor, and I'll actually make a video that goes more into constructors. A constructor, when you first use this new keyword, what's going to happen is that this constructor is actually going to fire. And when we actually fire this constructor or when we actually fire this class, what we're going to do is we're going to put a two inside of it and we're going to fill it up with data. And then Pokemon 2, we're not going to put anything inside of it because it, just for example sake, you could put something in there if you want to, but I'm not going to. I am just going to have one with no value in it just to showcase how it works. So then also, once again, we can have methods within our classes so that we can act on our Pokemon data. And one way that you can create a class is just to put it down at the bottom that's convention in every single object oriented programming language and what we're going to do is i'm going to say console log pokemon just like this so we're going to go console log dot pokemon and this is going to be literally the most simple class that we could possibly have and what we are going to do is we are going to um sout and put in our Pokemon just to log our two. But like I said, this class doesn't even really exist and we need to go ahead into our main and we need to make it actually run and so that we can take a look and see what's actually inside of it. So we're gonna go in here and we are going to go Pokemon and we're going to go Squirtle. We're going to create a Squirtle and we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna new this bad boy up and let's go ahead and see what's inside of it and see 
what we can actually log. And I'm going to put a console log right here or a system out uh, just so that we can see what's inside of it and we can actually see what's inside of this uh, variable so we can see our Excel spreadsheet. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this red dot right here. If you don't know how this works, put, put the red dot and then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna hit the bug and we're gonna <laughs> go ahead and run this thing. So let's see what's inside of our Squirtle. So nothing interesting so far because it actually hasn't been nude up yet. What we need to do is we need to go down one more. And if you look inside of it, and if, oh, here we go. So we can actually see inside of our Squirtle and we have these two right here. We have Pokemon and we have Pokemon 2 and we can see what's actually inside of it. Next thing that we want to do is let's actually print out and actually manipulate our variables. And let's just see, let me see, Squirtle dot console log Pokemon. And let's actually use our data that we have and let's actually see what we have stored inside of our class. And as you can tell, we can actually dot into the actual data and we can see, we can actually manipulate any type of data that we want to. So first thing, let's go in here. What I'm going to do, and if you notice, we can't actually access our Pokemon, uh, Pokemon and our Pokemon 2 because this is private. That's actually what the private variable means. So if we want to be able to actually see inside here and we want to be able to go inside of our class what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make that public and if you look we can actually see our variable look would you look at that isn't that beautiful and it's kind of a it's a really cool i think it's a really cool concept i think it's um interesting object oriented programming is one of the most important aspects and it's so elegant because it's so simple but it's so powerful at the same time you can use these exact same concepts in order to build very scalable software. So let's just go ahead and step through this. I'm gonna hit the bug and we're gonna step through it and see what it logs out. So we're gonna go down, down, and Squirtle console log the Pokemon. And let's see, when it go into our terminal. Let me see, I think I'm just gonna have to stop it and rerun it without the debugger and it locks the two which we populated within our class. And that's a good place to stop. I think that that's a very good introduction to classes and that should help you get along the way as we go deeper into some of these more advanced concepts. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.